All right, so for this video, I'm gonna be talking about Miles Turner and the Indiana Pacers once again, because I simply just can't stop watching them. I can't stop thinking about them. I can't stop talking about them. It's almost like they're some long lost ex, even though I've never had one of those, I've never been in that situation, but I imagine this is what it'd feel like. Either way, it's about time that I am talking about Miles Turner because this season he is taking a huge leap in talent and uh, you can see it on the board behind me. I think as of now, he is easily the front runner for Defensive Player of the Year and just, you know, some numbers to back that up. He's currently leading the league in blocks per game with 4.2, a full 1.4 blocks ahead of second place, which is just absolutely absurd that he's still doing this a full month into the season. And he's also averaging 1.5 steals per game, which puts him at around, you know, 15, 16 place in the league. And if you just look at only bigs, there are he's fourth in that sense I don't even know if this makes sense but you know Larry Nance is ahead of him Andre Drummond's ahead of him Nicole Jokic is ahead of him other than that it's all guards and wings so take that as you will but the interesting thing to me is when I was looking through Miles Turner's stats and his year-to-year -year changes and all that good stuff there hasn't really been much outside of the steals and blocks so far in the 2021 season his points per game and rebounds per game are around the same. He's shooting at similar efficiencies. He's not taking any more or less shots than he normally has in the past. It's truly just the fact that he's having an insane season in terms of steals and blocks. And I have a few reasons as to why this might be. First one, obviously just new head coach Nate Bjorkgren. Perhaps he's just brought in some new system that just fits Miles Turner better than what Nate McMillan had ever had in the past and perhaps that's the reason why or maybe it's just simply that Miles Turner is just putting in more effort than he would in a normal season because of the situation he's in maybe he just feels more comfortable with Nate Bjorkgren as his head coach I don't know there's a whole lot of possibilities that could be playing into it either way Miles Turner is finally taking the big leap that everyone has been expecting and wanting from him for so long and for those of you who may not know, I reside my fandom with the Boston Celtics in the NBA, and he was a big name in terms of trade rumors for the Celtics this past offseason, with Gordon Hayward potentially being a sign-and-trade option to Indiana that was picking up a lot of steam, and Miles Turner was the main piece coming back to Boston in that potential deal. Now obviously since that point, Miles Turner has been playing amazing, he's been playing like a depoy as I have up there, and a lot of Celtics fans are now a little frustrated that Miles Turner isn't in the Celtic green, but I'm here to say that I'm still pretty, I don't want to say happy, but I am living with the fact that the trade didn't get done. And that's because while Miles Turner does fit a lot of the needs that we have on this team right now, he also leaves a lot of them unsettled as well and, you know, unchecked in terms of checking off boxes. Whereas, while he's still in Indiana, that is honestly a pretty good scenario for him to be in, an elite shot blocker like him. And that's because Miles Turner's just never been a great rebounder. Even though he's in the paint a lot and he's racking up all these blocks and steals and contesting all these shots, he just flat out just has never been a great rebounder. And while he's in Indiana, he has DeMontis Sabonis, another guy who can play the center, although he starts as a power forward, but Sabonis is a great rebounder. He has already had a 2020 game this year where he had 20 points and 20 rebounds. He's had plenty of big rebounding games in the past, and they just work well together because while Turner is the one that affects the shot, it's Sabonis who usually cleans up the rebound and gets the mess. Whereas if we look at the Celtics, the Celtics have needed a good rebounder for so long and it took until this past offseason when they finally brought on Tristan Thompson, who is the first player to average 10 or more rebounds in a season that's been on the Celtics roster in God knows how long. I can't even, I'd have to look it up to tell you who the last one was because I tell you, it wasn't Daniel Tice, it wasn't Al Horford, it wasn't, I, I don't know, you might have to go all the way back to Kevin Garnett for all I know. But with that being said, there also is the caveat that Miles Turner, as I've said multiple times in this video, is looking like one of the best defenders in the NBA right now. And that is something that the Celtics would love greatly at the center position. It's a big reason why they missed out on a finals trip last year. And it's a big reason why I still think they're going to have some struggles in the near future. Because as of now, Tristan Thompson and Daniel Tice just are not good enough defensively to go with the best of the guys in the East that we have to see the Celtics get through in order to win an eventual championship. Obviously, I already pointed out, but Bam Adebayo lit us up last year. Joel Embiid just had back-to-back -back games where he lit us up for a combined, you know, 80 points and like 30 rebounds. 
and you know just the Celtics need a big who can defend these guys and at least give them a fighting chance where they don't have to constantly send double teams or design whole strategies that shake up their rotations and game plans in order to stop these guys. And while Miles Turner would be a very good candidate at doing that, I also, you know, that's one thing I would have loved to have him for. But at the same time, the rebounding issue is a real one. And also just offensively, Miles Turner still leaves a lot out there. Again, bringing back the Pacers into this, they have a offensive system now where they work through DeMontis Sabonis a lot of time, and that is Sabonis being in the post, working as a pick and roll guy, rolling to the rim, short rolls, passing it off to the weak side, all that good stuff. Meanwhile, it's Miles Turner who honestly just camps the three-point line most of the time and is looking for those catch-and-shoot opportunities. He shoots about five threes per game, and he shoots them at a 33% clip, which isn't great, but for a center, it's respectable, and it means that opposing teams will have to pull their bigs out of the paint, opening up other opportunities for the offense. And Miles Turner is very comfortable taking these shots. I mean, in the past, it's been a huge debate over him and his long-range middies that he used to take before Nate Bjorkren was head coach of the Pacers and finally drilled into his head to take some more threes. And I don't know if that's just someone I would want on the offense for the Boston Celtics. Seeing as a lot of the Boston offense is run at the top of the key, where it's just a lot of pick setting by their centers, whether it be Daniel Tice, you know, Robert Williams, Tristan Thompson, those guys all just work as screeners for the smaller guards and wings like Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum. And while it has had some struggles in the past, that's just, that's their offense. It works. It's worked in the past. It, get, you know, it, it gets enough done. And in the end, I just don't know if that would be best utilizing Miles Turner. So again, I'll just say it for clarity, while I would absolutely love to get his defensive aspects, I just think he still leaves a lot of boxes unchecked in terms of fitting the Celtics, in terms of being a you know useful offensive piece, while also just not being a great rebounder as well. But I also want to make it very clear, I'm not at all making this video to slander Miles Turner or hate on him. I, he's, like I said, he's currently my front runner for Defensive Player of the Year. His, uh, the, what he's done on the defensive side of the ball so far this season is stuff that we've barely ever seen before, and it's truly amazing that he's averaging over five stocks per game and just getting so many deflections and being such a disruptor on the defensive end. Because again, if you know, we went back to the year he was drafted and people were saying what his ceiling was in terms of being a NBA-level defender, I honestly think he'd be past those expectations right now with the way he's been playing. And overall, he's a very big reason why the Pacers have been seeing so much success just because he fits their system so well with what they're doing right now. They have Malcolm Brogdon and Aaron Holiday, Justin Holiday, Doug McDermott. All those guys are great scorers and a few of them are good assistmen as well. And the way Miles Turner plays on offense, he is just going to, again, camp three point lines, be ready for catch and shoot opportunities. But he's also not afraid to dive in for a lob every now and then from guys like Malcolm Brogdon. And again, just the fact that Sabonis is able to work the paint so well on offense, he then opens up more of the opportunities for Miles Turner to do what he does best. And then again, on the defensive side of things, Miles Turner just does such a great job of clogging the paint. He allows uh, many more opportunities for Devonta Sabonis then on the defensive side of the ball to get easier rebounds allowing the team to just let Sabonis take the ball up the court, flow into their offense, and just overall it is just a great, fun basketball strategy to watch. And I guess that's why I've been enjoying the Pacers so much because they play great defense led by Miles Turner, leading into great offense led by DeMonta Sabonis. But I'll do it for this video. As always, leave some comments down below with your thoughts on Miles Turner, Celtics, Pacers, whatever you want to mention. Outside of that, leave a like if you enjoyed this video or enjoy this type of content. And as always, most importantly, thank you for watching.